Should all schools in this country be open this fall for five day in, five day a week in person learning, regardless? Based on the science and the CDC, they should probably all be open. There's not overwhelming evidence that there's much of a transmission among these people, young people. He said probably. He said did not say absolutely because we've all seen this since unfortunately January of 2020. It's an unpredictable yeah, virus. Sure it is a virus that has you know it mutates. It's so we can't look in a crystal ball and say what September looks like. Well, there is something about going back to school and the impact of the teachers' unions, and there has been speculation about it, but this story about the, from the New York Post uh, with actual language that the teachers' unions gave and gave back and forth with the CDC has changed the dynamics here, and one senator of several are weighing in. The CDC is a thoroughly politicized agency. Uh, most Americans disregard their advice on things like steaks and hamburgers and beers. Uh, increasingly, they should disregard their advice when it comes to school reopenings. We shouldn't have a politicized public health bureaucracy like the CDC answering at the beck and call of the teachers unions. We need kids back in school and back in real school, not sitting in a classroom doing a Zoom session with teachers who are not in the classroom. We need kids in schools with their teachers now. So what about all of this? Let's bring in our panel. Byron York, chief political correspondent for The Washington Examiner. Mar Eliasson, national political correspondent of National Public Radio. And Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. Uh, Trey, we saw earlier that the president, the first lady, went into a classroom. She, they asked, how is this virtual school going? How was it? Uh, basically, the answer they got was it, it really was horrible. Yeah, I think they used the word terrible. I, I think the lesson here, Brett, is follow the science unless a really large political constituency that provides lots of money to your election tells you otherwise. I mean, if you're going to follow the science, follow the science that says kids are being hurt, whether it's socialization, nutrition, you name it, they're being hurt by being out of the classroom. So, uh, look, they, they shut in South Carolina, my wife's a school teacher, Brett, she's been in the classroom the entire year. I find it stunning that there are kids that are still not in the classroom. Mara, there has been this push and then a walk back on the terminology, and these, these emails seem to show that there was kind of a, a couching of the words uh, by the CDC, or at least they suggest that. Yeah, well, it, it's unclear how much of the CDC's guidance was dictated by the teachers' unions. The teachers' unions are an important constituency of the Democratic Party. They weighed in, along with other groups, on these guidelines. But you just heard the president say that Schools should be open and kids should be in classrooms with teachers. And I think that's what you're going to see certainly in September, if not sooner. My kid yeah. just went back to school and I'm really happy about well, sure. it. Sure. And a lot of parents who don't have kids going back to school are very upset about it. But, but then we followed it up with Anita Dunn, who put the major couch on it, saying he said maybe or should, um, meaning they're not pushing for it yet. It doesn't seem. Well, they should be because parents really well, want it. Yeah. Byron? Well, look, we have been talking for a long time about how the Democratic candidates and then President Biden were in the pocket of the teachers union. But I think the New York Post story is really devastating because it does show you exactly how that works. And one of the worst parts about it is it is not unusual in Washington for lobbying groups to suggest language to government agencies. I mean, it, it happens. A lot of progressives think it's a really bad thing. Um, but this is, this is a scientific agency, the CDC. And basically what we saw in the New York Post report was the actual cutting and pasting of language from the teachers union to CDC policy. And then with Anita Dunn, uh, you have a, a failure to say to affirmatively that schools will reopen. We all know that if there's some terrible resurgence and people are locked down again and the disease comes roaring back, that would change things. But right now, the government can say schools will reopen in September. I mean, just historical here, you look back to the CDC director in which she said that the transmission rates very minuscule and that kids should be able to go back to school even if not vaccinated or the teachers not vaccinated. Then you had teachers in men, many places across the country, Trey, that were first in line. 
so that they could go back to school, and yet many did not. I think you also have Biden, Secretary of Education, saying kids do better in the classroom, just like those kids said in that video. What I do find a little bit interesting, Brett, is, you know, the, the, the Biden administration was talking about forcing soldiers to be vaccinated for the betterment of the country. I, I'm not telling you to force teachers to be vaccinated. How about just encourage them to get back in the classroom? How about say no to one of your constituencies? I know he loves unions, Brett. Uh, but, but he also is supposed to love kids, too. Just say no to the teachers union and get the kids back in the classroom. You know, Mar, Anita Dunn said we can't look into a crystal ball. We don't know what September looks like. But they don't have that same phrasing when talking about climate change or the impacts that need to happen now to change, you know, how the country operates on that front. Yeah, but they can operate with the best science they have at the moment. And right now, what the science says, and we've been told this by administration officials over and over again, that it's safe to be in a classroom, even if a teacher isn't vaccinated. Byron, last thing is, I talked to Britt about this. Does this 1619 project uh, and education, is it a big political issue, do you think? I, I think it. I think it could be. I think Mitch McConnell has been absolutely right about this. And uh, the New York Times intended the 1619 project to become a school curriculum. Uh, and this is something that we look. There are debates about school curriculum all the time. And the idea of reframing American history to make 1619 the arrival of first Africans who became slaves in what became the United States to make that the country's quote true founding. That's the words of the 1619 Project. Of course you're going to have a lot of people who do not want their children taught that the founding was not 1776. It wasn't when the Constitution was created. It wasn't the Federalist Papers. It was about slavery. I think there's a lot of debate about that. Yeah, that story will continue for sure. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.